hi guys. Good good evening. Good evening. This is LaQueen Battle of Battle for Saving Spinal Services. I am here at um at this um this store right here. Um here right here. Um hi, okay. So this is the Queen Battle. I'm here across from Boston, Boston College. I am pretty much doing some prep work getting ready for the presentation on Thursday. I have two presentations on Thursday. The first one is um, Never In My Life, um, my experiencing um, um, learning gay life in my 40s. So hopefully you guys will come together with me on that presentation. The second one I have is, I'm trying to get ready for that, it's a little bit more emotional for me, is the um, the uh, 57th year anniversary of Capital yeah. Joy International, um, which was started in 19, uh, 1957 and closed its doors last year in 2020. Okay, so I am getting ready for that too as well. Okay, so I'm kind of like a little project here, all over here today. Okay, all right, so um, that is what that is. Okay, so anyway. I'm getting ready for some presentations, like I'm just going through a couple of research, some research things right now. Uh, first of all, I'm doing some emails. You guys may see me do some pop-up emails on my, um, you may see me do some pop-up emails on my Facebook, as well as LinkedIn profiles, Facebook, you may be seeing me do some pop-up emails on my Facebook profiles, my LinkedIn profiles, as well as my Instagram profiles. These are very important, okay? because um, I'm trying to and as well as my business my Google business feed because um, LinkedIn and as well as on my um, Instagram because I'm trying to go ahead and correlate everything okay as you know Calvary was a international ministry so it closed down its doors it was known all around the world okay Calvary was not our world and as you all guys also may know okay there was a just just over 24 hours ago they released over 20 hostages from Haiti um, there was a um, caravan uh, and caravan of, of people that released over 20 hostages from Haiti um, from a gang a gang um, a gang that was involved with the country of Haiti so they released them under the gang because it's been a lot of gang activity and violence since the coup d'etat of Haiti and its president as well as the um, unrest in the country and the government unrest as well as um, the economy is bad um, the food food shortages all around Haiti and some other issues too as well so they just released over 20 American uh, missionaries in Haiti that just happened over 24 hours ago and now I'm finally reporting on my church and its involvement um, throughout um, for over 60 years. Calvary has been in existence in over 60 years. So it was a surprise to me as well as I guess to some of my other friends that it closed down its doors just last year. Okay. And as well as, as well as, uh, on top of that, the, the pastor and his wife are getting older in age. And to my knowledge, it may or may not be revealed if the pastor's wife has since passed, past, Pastor Joy Nichols has since passed on, uh, passed on to another life, passed on, she has since died. Um, so they haven't announced, yeah, I'm sure she's still with us, praise the Lord. But again, um, the Nichols family, as well as the, the Foster family, have not made any announcements, but you guys have seen my YouTube video on the life and legacy of Pastor Bob and Joy Nichols on my YouTube channel for Battle First Aid Responsive Services, as well as um, continued progress um, for the new pastors of Catholic Cathedral International in Fort Worth, Texas, um, which is also a another good um, headquarters for the Trinity Broadcasting Network in Fort Worth. Um, which is the new pastors for Calvary Future International is Pastor Landon and Heather, Heather Schott. Pastors Landon and Heather Schott, which are pastors of Calvary Cathedral International. Uh, pastors Landon and Heather Schott are actually part of a larger network because anytime, uh, anytime a church is sold, anytime just a church that just a church that's been in existence that long, it could be, um, it could be 
the River Bible Institute, as you know, is one of our sister churches. Is. They have sister churches all around the United States, the River Bible in Tampa, Florida. You have um, Gateway International has sister churches, uh, which which sold our church, which our church, Catholic Cathedral, was sold to Gateway. So um, Gateway International. So that's really good that Calvary was sold to Gateway. So now Calvary has become another a city, a sister's church of Gateway International, as well as um, in um, Houston, Texas, you have a pastor of uh, Joel Osteen and his church. Pastor Joel Osteen's church has sister church, sister uh, sister churches all around the United States, and even the Potter's House of Dallas, Texas, has sister churches all around the United States. And I'm, I'm not just talking about people that use his name. I'm actually talking about people that use that are underneath the umbrella of his ministry, just like underneath the umbrella of his ministry of Gateway, underneath the umbrella of the ministry of Pastor Rodney Howard Brown, underneath the umbrella ministry of Pastor Benny Hinn. Pastor Benny Hinn has mega, mega, mega 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 ministries all across the whole entire world and him and his ministry um pastor benny him who is now getting older and who is now getting older um in age um so him and his ministry has ministries all around the world so that is also something that also has to do with the COVID pandemic so it's a lot of ministers that have been involved with Calvary Cathedral International. There's been Pastor Joyce Meyer. There's been Pastor Tim Story. There's been Pastor Marilyn Hickey. There's been Dr. Kenneth Copeland. Dr. Kenneth Copeland has been a part of Calvary Cathedral International. As well as, of course, Benny Hinn. Everybody knows Pastor Benny Hinn. Um, he's been around the world for years, and now he's getting into his 70s and 80s. And soon he has to pass down the baton of, since the COVID pandemic has really hurt the Christian ministry, the television, televangelistic ministry all around the world. So we hopefully can just continue to pray for the churches as well as the Christian church, as well as the Catholic church, and as well as the Muslim church for everybody to gather together and continue to pray for each other and lift each other during this holiday season. And as you know, we just had a death in the Muslim church where Dr. Uh, Malcolm X's uh, daughter just passed. Uh, just last night over 24 hours ago in New York City. So we did have a recent death um, of, of Mrs. Um, Ishba Shabazz, who passed away. She was found unconscious in her New York apartment in New York City. So again, let's continue to pray for the church and uplift the church as much as we can continue to do. Okay, so anyway, seven minutes. Okay, so I'm getting ready for a couple of events. I'm going to go ahead and put, try to put all this into a PowerPoint presentation and then hopefully do this on a Zoom. Okay, I'm going to try to, um, I was going to do this on a, on a um, Facebook Live, but it's more professional on a Zoom. Okay, I might just make do this on a Zoom. It's a little bit more professional on Zoom. But like I said before, to all my friends of Foster family, Robert, Robbie Foster, um, who is now a youth minister for um, for a Mercy Culture Church, which is a, which is a new name for Catholic Cathedral International, which was sold under the umbrella of Gateway Church International. Okay, Gateway Church International. Um, so Gateway Church it used to be under Pastor Rick Warren, uh, but now it's under I'm sorry it's under Pastor Robert Morris. So thank God that Gateway Church International is now under Pastor Rick, Robert Morris who is still an umbrella under Pastor Bob and Joy Nichols. Okay, all right, so we're still good. It's not just landed, they're just a, they're a young family, but they have a lot of ministries to live back under. So they are still underneath an umbrella. The new pastors are also have somebody above them, always somebody above them to follow in the ministry. You can't just, you can't just, you can't just take over a church like Catholic Theater International over 60 years and I know nobody knew about it, okay? And on top of that, the pastors are getting older in age. So it has somebody, it has to be an umbrella, an umbrella of ministries and ministries and ministries and ministries over them to lead them in the right direction. Like I said before, this has been, I sent an email on Facebook to Charlie Pryor as well as to the ministry, Pastor Charlie Pryor and Pastor Glenn Tidwell, that this has been an international ministry for years and years, over 60 years. Again, Dr. Kenneth Copeland has been to Calvary many times Kenneth Copeland as well as Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn has been to Calvary Cathedral many times. As you know, Benny Hinn is getting older in age too as well. So of course the pandemic has hurt a lot of ministries too around the world. 
And of course, we cannot forget Joyce Meyer. Joyce Meyer has also had um, a couple of people in her employees have since died because passed since the COVID pandemic. But again, uh, we have to continue to uplift the Christian church and what's going through right now. Uh, the Christian church is, has its media, main media broadcast through Trinity Broadcasting Network, TDN, as well as, um, as well as um, um, a whole bunch of other uh, Christian television networks. There's uh, BET, there's Gospel Network, there is uh, Daystar, Daystar. Daystar is also a wonderful Christian, Christian television network. My aunt, Darlene Mercer, has also been a part of Daystar. She's been, she has sung a couple times with Daystar, as well as with Trinity Broadcasting Network. So, as you know, Trinity Broadcasting Network is around the world. Okay, so thank goodness, praise the Lord, that the Christian ministries, the Christian missionaries in Haiti were released uh, just over 24 hours ago from the hands of the gangs in Haiti. Okay, so, um, so, Thank goodness. Okay. All right. So I'm here at a cafe here in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. We have to be in it. Okay. So I just want to go ahead and briefly explain this right quickly. Okay. I'm getting ready for this event and I, I'm going to send you guys some emails because I want to get this out on social media. I know I'm a little older now. Okay. I'm not as young as I used to be, but I still have a lot of friends, both young and old. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm trying to get the letters out to you guys on social media so that people can read the letters and connect with the letters to see if you are connected in any way to that ministry. So what I'm going to literally have to do on social media is write on a piece of paper my name and write my church's name and then take a picture of myself on social media and put the picture of my church's name on social media like this and say if you are connected to this church take a picture of myself put, put my church's name on a piece of paper and take a picture of myself and share it to social media like this. And if you are connected to my church in any way, you can connect to me and to this event on Facebook Live and Zoom. And people do this all the time on social media, especially if they have lost loved ones and friends, or, or they're trying to find a missing relative, they do this all the time, okay? Especially if they're trying to find missing relatives, they do it all the time, they take a picture of themselves, and they put it their, their missing relative, their family's name on a piece of paper, and they share like this on social media. Okay, all right, good. So I'm gonna have to do that, I'm gonna take a picture of myself on social media and share it like this, okay? So you guys will get this for me on social media like this. If you have any way connected to Calvary Academy, and this is Queen Bound, if you're any way connected to Calvary Academy, and you know this face, okay, over 40 years ago, <laughs> 35, 40 years ago, and you're connected to this, okay? <laughs> Email me on Facebook, LinkedIn, any any source of social media. And I will take a picture of myself and put it on Facebook as well as Instagram. I do not have WhatsApp. I do not have TikTok. <laughs> I do not have Snapchat, but this is on all, all social media. You can connect with me like that. Okay, all right, okay. It's old, but it works. It works all the time. <laughs> all right, okay. Okay, good. All right, so I might just do this on Zoom. Zoom is a better, easier, professional platform. A lot of city governments, they don't do Facebook Live. They do Zooms because it's a little bit more professional. Okay? All right. So, as you know, okay, of course, I'm going to make this quick and simple and sweet because I got my face mask. I'm in public. They gave me a bowl of chili. It's pretty good. It's vegan chili. It's vegan chili. It's okay. All right. Okay. So, anyway. Okay, so Calvary Cathedral International okay, in Fort Worth, Texas, was sold to Mercy Culture Church. The new pastors, Pastor Landon and Heather Schott, okay, Pastor Schott, Pastor Schott, C-S-C-H-O-T-T, -T, Pastor Schott are under the umbrella of Gateway Church Network International. Now, Gateway Church International is over 50, 100 churches all around the world, not just here in the United States, but international, okay? So you call them Pastor Shot. They're not going to shoot you, but you call them Pastor Shot. <laughs> anyway, okay, so Pastor Landon and Heather Shot are under the new pastors of Calvary Cathedral International, okay, under the umbrella of Pastor Bob and Joy Nichols for over 60 years. As you know, Calvary has been involved through a lot of international medias all around the world, okay? All right, you see them on TBN, you see them 
all the minute all the ministers that have come into Calvary. And then Gateway Church International is under the umbrella of Pastor Robert Morris of Gateway Church International, as well as another conglomerate of pastors. Pastors um, that are pastors of Gateway. Okay, I can let me see if I can find some more pastors of Gateway because I'm here on Facebook Live. Because Pastor Bob and Joy Nichols are soon getting old in age. Okay, you also have Pastor Tom Lane and Pastor Marcus Breathen. They are also part of Gateway Church. Pastors Tom Lane. And pastors Marcus Breathen. Marcus, Mar Marcus Breachen. Okay, so you also have Pastor Tom Lane and pastors Marcus Breathen are also under Gateway Church International. Okay, so they are also under the umbrella of Gateway Church International. Okay, which the church doesn't exist by itself. Whenever you have sister churches, like sister, sister cities and governments. The sister cities don't just exist by themselves. They're part of this one big city. Like in Fort Worth, Fort Worth has sister cities around the world. Like New York City. New York City has sister cities in different countries that it sends money or sends, to, sends support for. Okay, Boston. Boston, Massachusetts has sister cities. Sister cities around the world in China in Asia, in India, in Europe, in London, in Paris, in South America, in, in Argentina, in Brazil, in Mexico, in the islands, in the Bahamas, in the Caribbean. Seems like Boston, like, like Houston, like Dallas, like, like Los Angeles, like Atlanta, like Chicago, like Miami, have sister, sister cities all around the world that they continue to support. These big cities have big budgets, so they have sister cities that they send support, financial support, to for these sister cities to get the get funding for orphanages, funding for schools, funding for roads for government roads, funding for businesses, funding for nonprofit charities, funding for um, media media journalists to continue reporting on the on what's going on in the city, funding for governments. Because you have all these big cities, major big cities like London, Paris, um, Germany, um, um, all, all around the world, Norway. They have so much money, so much big budgets, that they have the opportunity to give back to other governments. Okay, Not just people, not just organizations, not just businesses, but they have the opportunity to give back to organizations, okay, big, to, so big, Big governments have the opportunities to give back to smaller governments, okay? And that's the way you can keep the economy flowing and the, and the whole glo global organizations moving in a better way, okay? That's how it's worked. It's worked that way for, for ages and ages. Even in World War One and World War Two, okay, you had, you had sister cities in places like in Japan, okay, in, in, in Korea, the United States has sister cities that it can send support for to help out our troops who were overseas, okay? They needed to get the support to sister cities for in order for us to keep saying that we were on the same page or what was going on with the war or what was going on in the economy or what was going on in our government, okay? We want it to be the same relations, okay? So that's how it works, okay? You have sister cities, sister governments, and sister churches. It's always worked that way, okay? It's not just one person trying to get money out of one person. It's just you have you have established the same the same relationship. How do I know? Because I have the opportunity to work for uh, economic and community development as an intern in high school for my for my local city government in high school. So I have the opportunity to do that, okay? So it was a great opportunity, great opportunity with my with my um, I worked for my city government in high school. Uh, uh, the manager, Siggy Frias, for the Fort Worth International Sister Cities International Center, as well as the Economic Community Development Department in Fort Worth, Texas, as well as, of course, 
Fort Worth Teen Corp. I work for Teen Corp, so I know how it is, okay? I work for Teen Corp, and a lot of cities have Teen Corp, okay? So I work for Teen Corp, so I know how it is, okay? All right, so anyway, that's how it works. It works for sister cities, sister cities, sister governments, and sister churches. Okay, all right. So anyway, so Pastor Bob and Joy Nichols sold the church to Pastor London and Heather Scott, who are who, London and Heather shot, shot, who are under the umbrella of Gateway Church, which is under the umbrella of Pastor Robert Morris. Okay. So I will try to go ahead and explain it all in Thursday's presentation on Thanksgiving Thursday, okay? <laughs> so this is the Queen Battle. I will share this with you guys on some of my uh, DFW small businesses. Thank you for inviting me to that Facebook group. Um, also to um, women and women's small businesses in uh, Houston, Texas. Thank you. Uh, uh, small businesses for Indians. Thank you for sharing that for my Facebook group. Uh, for uh, the Battle Family Network, thank you for my Facebook group, as well as some other Facebook groups which I'm a part of, I don't want to be a part of, so if you know the Queen, I'm, if I'm in your Facebook group and I do not connect with you, I'm so sorry, I apologize, I will immediately leave that group, okay? So anyway, I'm working with, I'm working with, with people, I work with organizations, okay? I've also sent out a whole bunch of emails to uh, radio stations in regards to Pastor Jesse Jackson, Reverend Jesse Jackson needing media help. <laughs> so, Reverend Jesse Jackson does need media help for his podcast. When I was on his podcast on Sunday, he only had 15, 20 viewers, okay? At the end of the day, on Sunday, the, the 20, 19th, 20th, this past Sunday, he had over 2,000, 3,000 viewers for his Sunday morning podcast. So, it went from 15, 20 viewers on Sunday morning live to, at the end of the day, it went to 3,000 viewers because I shared it on all my Facebook groups. <laughs> so I'm very happy to know that Pastor Je Reverend Jesse Jackson, as well as his daughter, Santita, Sister Santita Jackson, are doing okay. All right. So anyway, this is the Queen Battle. Um, go ahead and shout out to, um, we're going to send condolences and prayers to the Malcolm X family, as well as to his daughter. May she rest in heaven. Um, Mrs. Shabazz, um, who died, who was found unconscious, um, unconscious this morning, earlier this morning in New York City, in her apartment in New York City. So prayers to the Malcolm X family and the Shabazz family right now in New York City, as well as to the Nation of Islam, who is going through some leadership changes. As you know, um, um, Minister Farrah Khan is also getting older in age, too. He's not young anymore, but he is getting older in his 80s. So he soon will have to pass down the baton to um, to new leadership in the Nation of Islam. So as you know, you do have Brother Ishmael Muhammad, who is also in the Nation of Islam, um, who, is, uh, who is a leader in the Nation of Islam. So um, Brother Ishmael Muhammad, um, who's also very much well known in the Nation of Islam, too, um, Go ahead and send out prayers and for his safety and well-being to I don't know if he is the new leader of the Nation of Islam or not but we do want to go ahead and send out prayers to uh, Minister Farrah Khan as well as to Brother Ishma Muhammad as well as to everything that is going on right now in the Nation of Islam and the Muslim community in general okay in general because there's been a lot of wars going on right now between um, American Muslims versus um, European Muslims. There's been a lot of, of differences uh, differences in dialect. It's not just necessarily white Muslim versus black Muslims. It's a lot of dialect and a lot of differences going on between the two. Okay, it's more than just race or color. It's a little bit more than that, okay? Um, it's just a little bit differences and the differences have existed for ages and ages and ages, okay? So again, we wanna go ahead and send prayers out for um, the, the Shabazz family as well as send prayers out to um, uh, brother um, 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 Minister Malcolm X and his family in New York City and the whole Arab world as well as to the Shabazz family uh, Betty Shabazz and all her children who are still in New York City currently living in her New York City which Betty Shabazz uh, has recently passed on but she was a wife of Malcolm X Dr. Betty Shabazz as well as um, the Nation of Islam which the Nation of Islam is still going through leadership changes right now um, throughout the United States and throughout the world. So, there's a lot of differences going on throughout the church. Um, the black church is also going through some leadership changes too, as you know. 
um, right now we do have, of course, we have Reverend Jesse Jackson and we have Reverend Al Sharpton, but they are more media people. Uh, but they are media, they are still ministers. They are still ministers in the faith, but they are more, they are more um, politics related to the, to, the, to the church, black talk politics. Now what we're talking about in the black church, there's a lot of underlining ministries going on. It's more than just the, um, it's more than just the, uh, the it's, it's, it's a lot of changes going on in the tele-evangelism ministry, okay? Tele-evangelism, okay? So tele-evangelism is going through a changes all around the world since the pandemic, okay? There's a lot of leaders that are losing um, losing um, faith and since the pandemic started we have lost a lot of leaders that have not their deaths have not been reported to the press okay so I've only been able to catch a few of these people since the pandemic started but because uh, because the um, pandemic has started over the past course of two three years the television ministry both the black church and the white church as well as the Latino church has lost uh, ministers um, across the world. So we have lost a couple of employees and the Joyce Meyer ministry has lost a couple of employers due to the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as the um, a couple other ministries too. I was able to actually find an employee that did since pass because in the Joyce Meyer, although it was not reported to the press, I was able to report it to the press and make sure that it was okay. And I stood to Attorney General in Missouri and the Attorney General in Missouri thanked me that I reported it to him and his office and their attention. So of course, as you know, uh, the church, the black church, as well as the white, as well as the whole entire church and the tele-evangelism ministry is going through a lot of changes since the pandemic started. It's not just a couple of pandemic, the, the it's not, it has more than just the vaccine it has to do with it. It's more than just politics has to do with it. It's a lot that has to do with um, leadership changes in the church, okay? So it has a lot to do with politics as well as what people want the vaccine or not. But it's just the church itself, uh, the, our, our leadership and our ministers are getting older in age in their 80s and their 90s. And they have to pass on the baton to new leaders and, and, new, and new people of the faith, okay? Whatever their faith may be. And so they have to figure out where are we going to find this, both male and female. And, and it doesn't matter if you are um, whatever your, even whatever your preference is, whatever your sexuality is, they're still looking for in the queer community and the church, the queer church, as well as people in the church, the Catholic church, um, whatever, whatever faith you have, we are looking for leadership. The church is looking for leadership. And that is what I have to talk about on Thursday relating to um, relating to uh, the 57th anniversary of Catholic Cathedral International. So um, the COVID pandemic has put a lot. I'm not the only one that has noticed it, but a lot of other ministers have actually sat down and had talks about this, about the civil rights movement, as well as we are losing, on top of that, on top of that, we are losing a lot of our leaders from the civil rights movement of the 1950s and the 1960s. We are losing a lot of our leaders whose deaths, whose deaths have not been reported to the press and to the public. Okay, so um, a lot of our leaders, thank goodness that we were able to, to Mrs. Shabazz's death was reported to the public today. But a lot of our leaders from the civil rights movement of the 1950s and the 1960s, under Doctor, under the Fabulous Four, the Fabulous Four of the 1960s, 50s and the 1960s, the Fabulous Four, you had Dr. Martin Luther King, you had um, the Fabulous Four of the 1950s and the 1960s, you had Dr. Martin Luther King, you had. Um, let me look it up here. I'm still live on Facebook, thank you. Okay. So the fabulous four of the 1950s and the 1960s. You had Dr. Martin Luther King of the SCLSC. You have Stokely Carmichael. Hold on for a second.
Yeah, St Starkey, Starkey Cormichael of the of the civil rights movement. You had Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King. It's actually it's called the, the Fabulous Four, but it's actually the Big Six. It's the Big Six, but it's actually the Fabulous Four. Okay. So, um, so the Big Six, uh, the 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 Fabulous Four, and the Big Six were the ones, the leaders that that started in Atlanta and and Montgomery, Alabama. They started with Martin Luther King of the SCLSC and the Poor People's Campaign. Okay, and then all the Fabulous Four and the Big Six were the ones to lead Dr. Martin Luther King to the National March of Washington. So it's easy to Wikipedia this. I've been doing research on this for years. Okay, so I'm on Facebook Live, which is good. Okay, so you have the Big Six of the Civil Rights Movement and about three or four of these people have since passed. The Big Six, you have Dr. Martin Luther King who was shot in, in um, who was shot in Memphis, Tennessee. You have James Farmer. You have John Lewis who passed about three years ago in Washington, D.C. in New York. You have A. Philip Randolph, who was a minister. You have Roy Wilkins, and you have Whitney Young, Pastor uh, Minister uh, Whitney Young. These are the big six. Now, So the Fabulous Four and the Big Six were also the ones to get started the Civil Rights Act of 1964. They were also the same ones to get started the Civil Rights Act of 1964. James Farmer was also part of the, with James Farmer, Starkey Carmichael, Dr. Martin Luther King, Okay, so So this is also found on NPR.org. Okay, NPR. No, it's not. The Freedom Fighters Coalition, the Sit and Movement Coalition, the SCLC Commission, the NAACP, which was founded in the 70s and 80s. Okay. A lot has since existed, which is really good. So I'm now 30 minutes into here into my Facebook Live today, so I'm very happy to be with you here, guys. 30 minutes into. Um, my Facebook Live. Okay, so
bear with me and bear with me. Okay, so the SNCC, the SCL, the SCLCC. And yes, Stucky Carmel did lead to the creation of the Black Panthers movement. So I'm just kind of going through this on Facebook Live. It says, Okay, all right, so. I hate Wikipedia. Okay, so here we go, we're just gonna make it easy. Okay, so the big four, it's just, it's just pretty much it's simple. I'm just gonna give you guys a couple of names, okay? So the big four is the, the is, they're called the Fabulous Four, the Civil Rights Movement, the Fabulous Four. You can't you cannot Wikipedia. It's not gonna happen. You're not gonna find it. But if you if you watch the National March in Washington of 1964, with Dr. Martin Luther King speaking there in Washington D.C., you will see all these four men speaking, okay? Dr. Martin Luther King. John Lewis, Roy Wilkins, and Whitney Young. Okay, and these were the fabulous for the well. Some of them, they're not all of them. I didn't get all. I didn't get the top two names. I'm missing two names. Okay, but there were Stucky Carmichael as well as Dr. Martin Luther King and John Lewis. I'm missing one more name. I'm missing one more person. Uh, I'm missing one more person, but my head hurts. Anyway. So these, so what it is is the civil rights movement. We're losing a lot of our leaders that were young back then. Now Jesse Jackson was in his early twenties when Dr. Martin Luther King was shot. Okay, in Memphis, Tennessee. Okay, I was not because I was there at, at the Loretta Hotel. I actually visited the Loretta Hotel in Memphis, Tennessee myself. Okay, so um, I'm, I've seen it from the peer view. Okay, so. Um, that's kind of that's he was there on that on that on that site okay he was there at that site at that particular time and day when it happened okay so now that he's getting in age as you know a lot of this it could even be a picture we're losing a lot of our leaders from the civil rights movement in the 1960s and the 1964 1965 okay now it may be oh it's just a picture somebody took a picture of the civil rights of the civil rights movement leaders and everybody in that picture is dying off that's what it looks like to me. That's what it, it, that's what it looks like to me. It looks like somebody has a picture of somebody from the civil rights movement. They're looking at a picture of, the, of these people in the civil rights movement. They're looking at a picture of all our leaders, and our leaders are literally falling off one by one by one by one by one. But again, at the same time, they're either falling off as a natural transition due to, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic, which is which is a, a respiratory virus. Okay, are they falling off due to they're being shot, they're being murdered, um, they're in car accidents, um, um, they're dealing with police violence, a lot of that, a lot of that. So again, that has to deal with what our leaders, we're losing our leadership, we're losing our leaders. And so right now, at the helms of Reverend Al Sharpton and the National Action Network in, in, um, in New York, okay, in Harlem, New York, who is going to replace Reverend Al Sharpton and his leadership? Who is going to replace Jesse Jackson and his leadership? Who is going to replace Minister Farrakhan and his leadership? Who is going to replace Father Flager in Chicago, Illinois and his leadership? Okay. Who is going to replace Minister Rick Warren in California and his leadership? Okay. Who is going to replace Benny Hinn, okay, and his 
over 80, 90 year ministry and his leadership. Okay. Who is going to replace these people and their leadership? Okay. And their leadership. Okay. Which is what I'm going through a lot. Okay. So, <laughs> it's, it's a lot to deal with. I'm, I'm 40 minutes into this Facebook Live. Okay. I'm glad that our church was sold to Gateway Church International, which is, which is an umbrella. Okay. Because they still have to pay a debt. Okay. Everybody has a debt to pay. But I'm glad our church was sold to Gateway Church International, which is good. Okay. Okay. I would advise you guys to please continue to support Battle First Aid Responder Services and everything that we've been doing through the pandemic. Okay. Please continue as well as, okay, who is going to continue to, to who is going to replace Queen Elizabeth II and what the country of the UK is going to do with Brexit. What is the UK going to do with the onslaught of Brexit? as well as if they're going to replace uh, Queen Elizabeth II or not, okay? There's a lot of a lot of political issues going on. I really still don't have understand it, as well as still don't understand quite clearly what is going on. All I know, as the Queen Battle's opinion, the Queen Battle's opinion, voice, is that the COVID pandemic has taught us is that we've lost over two, three million people around the world, and we are still need to figure out how to deal with a natural and not a, an, an influence of a virus contagion around the world and still figure out a way to keep our leadership, keep our elderly and keep faith and focus on our families and our loved ones at home, okay? As well as deal with a new government, a new government and a new system set in place, okay? A new system and a new government, okay? A lot of people do not support the new government of the United States with President Joe Biden. They want to prefer our, our, our past president, Trump, okay? They, a lot of people have a lot of political differences between Trump and Biden, as well as political differences between, between Bush and Obama, or between Clinton and Bush, or between Carter and Clinton. People always have differences all around the world. But it's what you do with those differences, as well as trying to bring together a dialogue, a discussion of those differences, and come together and make sure that we can figure out a way to resolve those differences especially in times of pandemic or especially in times of war or especially in times of a revolution or especially in times where our country is failing and we are short on food we are on food shortages we have uh we are on food shortages we are on gas shortages we are, right now there was a report in the news today in the new york times saying that president biden is now tapping into the gas reserves into our into our oil reserves so now he's tapping into the oil reserves and the prices are high as well as he's trying they're trying to talk about um forgiving student loans but you cannot forgive student loans without without raising the increase on, on tuition increase in tuition how are you going to forgive student loans but uh not uh talk about increasing tuition in order to balance balance a budget that colleges have yet to deal with, okay? As well as Medicare and Medicaid. As well as Medicare and Medicaid, too. We still need our government to survive and depend on welfare benefits for those in need. Okay, so there's a lot of, a lot of things going on politically as well as through the economy. People are saying, oh, now we are in a religion, or we are in a a socialist government. Well, there's a lot of things have to do with socialism, as well as understanding who do we support, who has a job, what is your job in this economy, what were you made to do, and what does the government want you to do? Everybody has a job to do, and that is how socialism is, okay? Socialism pretty much tells you, the government tells you what your job is, okay? That is socialism, okay? All right, so we have a lot to do, but again, bear with me, bear with me in mind. Okay, I still do not understand everything, but this is what the pandemic has taught me. Okay, it's taught me a lot, but I'm still, I'm still, still learning a lot. Okay, and I pray that you guys pray for me and keep me in your thoughts and prayers during this holiday season. Okay, as well as pray for protection for me too as well. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So again, I did send out a letter, letter to the mayors of Boston, to Mayor Michelle Wu of Boston, Mayor Lori Light for the Chicago, Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms of Atlanta. Keisha Lance Bottoms is in her final term in office. 
So Keisha Lance Bottoms has less than six months left as mayor of Atlanta. So that so Atlanta is going to have a new mayor in less than six months, as well as Randall Wolfman of Birmingham, Eric Carletti of Los Angeles, um, Bill Bellazio, who is still saying he's he is mayor of New York, but Eric Adams is the confirmed mayor of New York. <laughs> as well as Eric Johnson of Dallas. So again, it has a lot to be doing with that. So I just sent a letter saying, please find a way to um, decrease, figure, bring an end to this pandemic. It still is gonna take some time. It still is gonna take some time. Okay, so it's gonna take some time. Okay, now I may not understand everything, okay? But I just ask that you guys continue to pray for me and keep me in your thoughts and your prayers, as well as donate. Donate to Battle First Aid Responder Services Incorporated. Okay, I'm on Cash App, Venmo, PayPal. Okay, at Battle First Aid Responder Services, Inc. INC. Okay. All right, this is Queen Battle CMA First Aid here in Boston, outside of the WBUR studios, next door to this wonderful cafe who was able to host me today. Had a nice bowl of vegan soup today and a glass of water. I'm very happy to be here today. Here in uh, Boston, Massachusetts, a lovely city. I've learned a lot every single day, but um, but it's been a lot. Okay, so I thank you guys for your continuous prayers and support. Okay, as you know, our leadership is going through a lot of changes. We are losing our leaders. They're still here. But they cannot do that by themselves. So if you, if you have a leader in your life, in your community, in your family, in your in your city, and you know that that leader of faith needs help or support, reach out to your friends, reach out to your community, and say, "Hey, what can we do? This is leader of faith. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a church. It could be a community center. They could be in government. What can we do to reach out to our leader of faith, and how can we support them in their efforts to build back up the community?" Okay, and you may not necessarily agree with that leader of faith. Everybody has differences, but it's how we unite together as differences and make each other as a whole. Okay, as a whole. All right. So again, I'm, I'm grateful, grateful that my, my my church, Catholic Cathedral International, is now under the leadership of Pastor Bob and Joy Nichols. Is now under the, the leadership of Pastor um, Landon and Heather Shot. <laughs> Pastor Shot as well as uh, they're now, Pastor Schott is under the leadership of Robert Norris of Gateway Church International. <laughs> All right, International Ministries, okay. So again, I'm gonna do some more research on, check up on updates from the ministries of Dr. Kenneth Copeland, Queen Battle will be checking on you, Dr. Kenneth Copeland, okay. <laughs> Dr. Benny Hinn, Pastor Benny Hinn, Queen Battle will be checking, checking up on you, Pastor Benny Hinn. Okay, Pastor Joyce Meyer, Pastor Joyce Meyer, LaQueen Battle will be checking up on you. Okay, uh, Pastor Marilyn Hickey, LaQueen Battle will be checking up on you. <laughs> Pastor Paula White, LaQueen Battle will be checking up on you. <laughs> Pastor Ronnie Howard Brown of You and Your 500 Day International <laughs> River Bible Conference. Well, Queen Battle Pastor will be checking up on you too as well. <laughs> okay. Especially to Pastor Benny Hinn. Uh, thank you so much, Pastor Benny Hinn, for your international international ministry of all around the world. The Queen Battle will be checking up on you, Pastor Benny Hinn. <laughs> LaQueen Battle will be checking up on you, Pastor Biddy him. Okay, all right, so this is LaQueen Battle, Battle First Aid Responder Services Incorporated here in the Boston area. Very happy to be here with you guys today. Uh, thank you so much for your time, attention, love, and concern. Um, I pray you guys will um, please continue to keep me in your thoughts and prayers. God bless you, your family, and loved ones this holiday season. And please be blessed in all that you do. You can email me at battlefirstaid at iCloud.com. That's B-A-T-T-L-E, the number one, S-T-A-I-D, at iCloud.com. And I'm also available here. You can reach me Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, as well as on all social media feeds and YouTube, too, as well. Okay? God bless you and your families and your loved ones this holiday season 2021 and into a new year and hopefully the end of a pandemic. 
that has raged us around the world. Okay, and of course the the onslaught of new governments and new legislations around the world um, as the as the world comes to a stage where we are changing over the hands of government. Uh, we are changing over the hands of government all around the world, especially in England. England, which is soon to be changing over hands of government pretty soon, pretty soon, okay? So either the hands of the Prime Minister or the hands of Her Majesty, um, as well as in um, royals, royals all around the world too, who will soon be changing over hands of government as well, okay? All right, so this is the Queen Battle, Battle First Aid Responder Services. Please continue keeping your thoughts and prayers. God bless you, your families, and your loved ones this season. Take care. God bless.